All right, before we start the review for Jump Force, I gotta do two things before we start. Let's look up the producer of Jump Force and see what he made before. Oh, he made Clash of the Titans video game, Ultimate Tenkai EG, and Dragon Ball Z Connect. <sighs> You know what, this might be promising. Let's see what everyone else has to say about the Ultimate Edition since they have it early. Let's talk about the issues. Let's just go look. I'm dead ass done with this game, man. I'm dead ass done with this game, bro. I'm done with this fucking game, man. Look, enough jokes and memes aside, but to be real, I've been following Jump Force since E3 2018, made over 50 plus videos in anticipation of the game, and played all the closed beta hours all together. I've also played this game for all three days of early access and followed all the updates with the beta and more for Jump Force. But further ado, let's get right into it. Jump Force Story Mode. The story mode of Jump Force is around 17 hours long, and you really can't skip through it. But literally, the story is when all the different universes from Shonen Jump belong to a collective concept known as Jump. This team of characters, the Jump Force is the best of all of these worlds coming together to fight against Light Yagami and others. The game is split between Team Alpha, Team Beta, and Team Gamma, aka Team Goku, Luffy, Naruto. The story mode cutscenes are so bad, I legitimately just couldn't finish it. What the hell was that cutscene? Oh. Jump Force is the first game in history where I'd rather tell you they should just have given us concept slideshows for cutscenes. Yeah, that hurt me saying that right now. <laughs> Remember how in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, like to unlock a lot of moves and Jump Force, you need to play through the story to get unlockable the characters? Somewhat, but in Jump Force, after you finish the tutorial, you literally have access to the shop where you can buy a lot of the Jump Force moves from other characters in the game, and some missions let you unlock moves just by playing or grinding them out. I find story mode in Jump Force not needed and one of the worst parts of the whole game. Alright, I'm going to be honest, I have to give you huge credit when it's time for it, and the customization in the game is really good. One, you got a boob slider, two, you can have a curse mark. You have a lot of parameters where you can move them up and down, left and right, and also, you have endless customization pieces for closing. You can have the freaking curse mark. If you're a Naruto fan, do you know how lit that is? Shinobi strikers don't even let you do that. You pretty much have free reigns on what you want to add on to your created character, and I think that's just phenomenal. A huge bonus that Jump Force has over all other customization pieces in other games is that items can be worn equally between both females and males in game. Example, I can have Naruto's attire on a female character, have female hairstyles if I want it on a male character as well. Creativity, uniqueness, that's fire. I like that. The whole world of Jump Force is big and pays a huge homage to the three main franchises. It's not as big as Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1s or 2s, but it's filled with a lobby of different shops and mission areas you can go through. However, Jump Force lobby hub world suffers greatly from massive motion blur sometimes and really inconsistent frame drops. The lobby vehicles and some cosmetic pieces even glitch out while riding them. Now we're on to the gameplay. I've made multiple in-depth videos on what's wrong with the combat of Jump Force on my channel, but however, I have to give Jump Force one thing. Jump Force is pretty fun. Jump Force is a simplistic arena fighter with the use of assist, and it keeps you entertained for the most part. 
Jump Force uses sound effects and particles after every attack that makes you feel good when you land a combo. However, the gameplay suffers from something I would never think would never be a part of a multiplayer game. When you do a friendly match with friends, there is still no rematch options. Let that sink in. One big issue I have with Jump Force gameplay is that moves have so much armor, the moves you think wouldn't have them. Yes, you can grab them, however it's hard to tell with how fast some of these moves are. In Jump Force, have you ever heard of a full screen command grab that you barely can stop? Exhibit A. Final verdict, there is pretty much not that much to do in this game. It's like a watered down Xenoverse. But I'm trying to keep it real, the game hurt me a lot, but I do have fun with it with all the other intricacies and flaws that it has. I want to range my score from 4 to 7 out of 10. It's fun, but has massive amount of flaws, and I would say Jump Force is really mediocre to okay at times. Should you buy this? Yes, but not at full retail price. Go get some trade in credit, trade some stuff in. You will not be mad about it. This is more of a twenty to thirty dollar investment, in my opinion. I do want to say I have the Ultimate Edition, and the game is getting a day one patch. However, with the company behind this games, patches only do so little to overall the huge major improvement. Some of the stuff that is coming in the patch has been noted to be really fine. I would recommend waiting a month or two before even purchasing Jump Force. The upcoming things in the patch state that. Upcoming Jump Force patch notes are added free avatar suit, improvement of story cutscene production, improved load times reduction, that's on PS4, it will improve over time, the game has a lot of long loading screens by the way, battle adjustment, activation timing on high speed counter, which may be good or bad for the gameplay, and cutscene skip option and lobby improvement. Literally. These are things that they had multiple betas for and should have been fixed before the full release of the game. Like the lobby should have been go good by so like at least before February. Cause we had closed betas, we had an open beta, then the open beta got canceled, brought back the open beta and didn't really improve the lobby like that. Cutscene skip option is so important because it literally makes it so tedious to play through it with how bad the cutscenes are in Jump Force. My final verdict is everybody on Twitter is saying that I'm flip flopping with the game and there is moments where I'm truly having fun with it but then most of the time I don't want to play the game like I just really just go online and play. I don't even want to play my friends because I can't even rematch them so until they add the rematch button that's a really big factor to saying hell no do not buy this game. That's my honest opinion on Jump Force ladies and gentlemen. You can take it and leave it. The game will potentially get better over time, but right now, as it is, it's a current release state, it ain't that fire. Um, it's a fun product, but besides the fact that you have your favorite characters, I honestly don't see no reason to buy this game. Like, legit, Jump Force is one of those games where, like, I can see people even, even if everything else I told you here you disagree with, at the end of the day, the game does have some of your favorite characters. You got JoJo's, Black Clover, My Hero Academia, Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Bleach, all in the same game. And that's only a few examples of some animes that are in here. And if you're really a big fan of that, I would tell you, go buy this game. That being said, it's your boy Avatar Yaya. I'll talk to you guys later. Remember, you guys are golden, and that is raw. Squala, peace! Face that